welcome to this episode of the Health Leader Podcast. My name is Christine Knox, and I am delighted to introduce you today to Robin Devine. Robin is a registered massage therapist and lives in Calgary, Canada. She is an expert in lymphatics, even though that term does not sit very well with her. However, she is super passionate about lymphatics and helping clients who have lymphatic issues. She is a trainer and educator. She has traveled all over the world training therapists on behalf of the Chiqui Institute, which is a USA training company. I would love for you to listen to this podcast with Robin and find out how inspirational she really is. She is a pint of all knowledge when it comes to lymphatics. She's written a book, she's created a conference, she's ran a clinic specializing in lymphatics. So enjoy this episode and find out more about training and delivering lymphatic work. Hello and welcome, Robin. (laughs) Thank you so much for agreeing to come and be on the Health Leader podcast. It is an absolute pleasure to have you here. Robin is a, a certified lymphedema therapist from Calgary, Alberta, Canada. And she's also a massage therapist and she's super passionate about the lymphatic system. Correct? That would be accurate. That would be a very accurate statement. Yeah. (laughs) I also know that you are, in in my opinion, an incredible educator and also an author and an event organizer of your own conference about lymphatics. I am, yeah. Everything lymphatic is the good stuff. (laughs) So thank you so much for coming today to have a conversation with me about all things lymphatics, which is exciting for me. We had the pleasure of catching up just recently at the beginning of the month. Was that, was that the beginning of the month? That was middle middle of July. Middle of July. Gosh. I know. When I know. you were over in Australia, in Sydney, mm-hmm. teaching. Um, yes. Yeah. So let's let's have a bit of a conversation. What I'm going to ask you first yeah. is just to share a little bit about your background in yeah. the field of lymphatic massage, especially the therapy education side of it as yeah. well. So if you can share so, why you got into lymphatics and then why you got into educating others. Absolutely. So I am a massage therapist. That's how I started out. And uh, I needed to I needed to get credits just like everybody else in their dog. And so I was looking and, you know, everybody was doing the same kinds of continuing ed. And I'm like, no, I kind of want to stand out. And there was this course called lymph drainage therapy. And I was like, nobody I know who does this. And I could geek out about something weird. That sounds good. And so, yeah, I took the the class and I didn't have a lot of like big aspirations for it because what we are taught in lymphatics in Canada, which is very similar to around the world, is very little. And so for me, it was like opening this like Pandora's box about your immune system and this like undercover sort of under the radar system that nobody seemed to really give credit to or any kind of value to. And then once you get into it, you're like, oh my God, why are we not doing this all the time? And so I really, I really dove deep and I, I took as many classes as I could. I I did my levels. I I started doing more training and, and it was fun because like, again, nobody else was doing it. So I got to kind of be this weird lymphatic geek in my city, but also my province and then sort of Western Canada, which, you know, it's kind of fun, but, um, you know, in, in, uh, during this whole time, I'm also teaching at massage schools and I had taught at three different massage schools over 12 years and, it just got so frustrating that they couldn't care less about lymphatics. And I was like, you know, I've got all this, this passion, this excitement, I've got, you know, clinical experience. I've taken these courses. Like it'd be easy to just double or triple the amount of time we do right now in school Mm -hmm. and build it up. And they were just very much, no, it's not a value. No, it's not important we don't have time. It's not really like part of the important curriculum. And I was like, this is not good. 
And so I had to actually physically stop teaching at massage schools and really dedicated my time to training to become an instructor for the Chickley Health Institute, which is who I did most of my training through. And, and now I'm an educator through them. So I teach many levels and different classes for the Chickley Health Institute about lymphatic drainage. And, and that's sort of what's giving me the ability to travel a lot and meet therapists all around the world, because it's not that it's just missing here. It's a missing link, I think, for most therapists around the entire world. So, you know, I joke about being like the Canadian lymphomaniac because I do geek out in a very, very good way, I think, about the lymphatic system. So it's um, it's a great way to get people, you know, into the lymphy groove, if you will, and just sort of start getting people a little bit excited and looking at how we add it into our everyday practice. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it was the same for me in the UK, in my qualifying course, my first ever massage course, it was an afternoon. Yeah. An afternoon where they covered what it is. And this is a very basic lymphatic drainage for the ankle, not even the, for the whole body. It was for no. the ankle. And it's so <laughs> absolutely minimal. minimal. And, yeah. and I, I don't like, you know, my, the level one class that I teach is a four day class. It's not like 40 days. It's four days. It's not unheard of and it's not impossible, but what you get in four days is, you know, what we learned in massage school was like the equivalent of like 30 minutes of the first day. Yeah. It's, it's honestly pathetic. And, and, it's just, it's, it's very, very disappointing. So yeah, when I was able to start bringing it as continuing ed, which I don't think it should be content. I think it should be part of the required training. Part, part but of the, the foundation of yeah. some of the body that, you know, if it's broken, if it's not working, um, yeah, the yeah. ramifications are death. <laughs> it's that, well and it's but it's but, your yeah. immune system it is extreme it's, form yeah yeah but it's your yeah. immune system and you know yeah. you shouldn't be able to take an oncology class without having to do lymphatics you shouldn't be able to you know become a pre and post-surgical therapist if you're not understanding lymphatics True. so it's a huge missing piece absolutely absolutely yeah. yes i absolutely agree um, and I know in Australia, it is about seven hours max. Yeah. I well, it's, that's better than what we do, which is nice to hear. Seven hours max. And it also depends on your teachers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's in all the textbooks, obviously. And that requires a person to read that. Um. <laughs> yeah. And, and also having an instructor who understands the techniques and can apply them properly, yes. not just read it and regurgitate yes. as an instructor, right? So that's the thing. It's True. it's yeah. it's a it's a great technique. Um and it's it's so easy and non-invasive and gentle. And you know, you can work on infants to seniors to hospice. And yeah. it applies to all of those groups together, right? Yeah. So it is such a versatile technique as well. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And I'll get into the benefits of practitioners in a moment. But first of all, I'm sure people are itching to know, how did you get a gig teaching at massage schools in the first place? How did that happen for you? Oh, um, you know what? It was, uh, so here in Canada, we have, it's not like a national, you know, basic number, but um, we have basically a two-year program, which is the accepted norm across the country. And I was in my second year teaching and I was like, you know what? I want to be the person at the front of the room. I want to, I want to be the teacher for this because I discovered that I had a really good knack at being able to break down a concept and teach it five different ways. So I was tutoring students in my classes as I was going through school and going, well, you could describe it this way, or you could look at it this way, or we could do it this way, or we could do it this way. And so as soon as I graduated, I started tutoring and I tutored students who were having troubles in the first and second year. And so I made sure that the, the dean of the school knew that I was doing this and that I was available and that this is what I was doing. And I was very honest. I was like, this is what I want to do. 
you know, and still practicing, I'm still getting my experience, but, and uh, this is what I want to do. And so um, I tutored a lot and I loved it. Like science is my thing. So anatomy, physiology, pathology, how do you memorize muscles? How do you, you know, break down the functions, functions of the kidney? How do you, you know, discover all the different hormones of the endocrine system and why is everybody scared of it? And I loved it. And so from there, I started to do like, you know, student practicum and student clinic supervision, and then it evolved into teaching. So I was, yeah, I think, I think the more you're obvious about what you want to do, the easier it is to get into that role because people know. Yeah. You do have right? to put your hand up and say, I would love to do that. This is what I want to do. Hello. I'm over yeah. here. Like, let me do what I want to do. And and I think too, it's, you know, just developing that confidence, but that if, if you can teach it, you understand it. Absolutely. And I don't know if you find this, I find this as I teach, I learn even more. Oh, and every time, yeah, every time. And I got, There's oh. always a student who asks the question that you're like, I've been doing this for eight years and not a single flipping person has asked me that question. And now I need to do some research and I need to ask people who are smarter than me and find out for you. And then I'll know that. And I love it. Yeah. I absolutely love it. Yeah. So absolutely. every time, every time. Every time. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It happens. It happens for me as well. And I, I kind of like go, Ooh, <laughs> I never thought of that before. Cool. Yeah. 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 Love I, it. I, I'm just thinking like back to, you know, when you're mentioning like the kidneys and all that stuff, I, like all of that, stuff just comes flooding back yeah and thank you to my teacher at the time who made us make up songs about kidneys and stories mm -hmm. and yeah and it was a very experiential yeah. first ever massage course that I did and then every other massage course I did after that was just mind-blowing in the experiential um activities they got us to do like songs and dances and movement in order to learn pathologies and yeah. anatomy and yeah. <laughs> I always I it was my all sorts <laughs> it was my favorite thing was when I was teaching anatomy physiology at the first school um students were getting stressed about like test marks and all that kind of stuff I said look if you want to you can do a presentation of anything based on anatomy physiology it's got to be like 20 minutes or whatever teach about something and it'll replace one of your quiz marks. It'll get, you'll get hundred percent on one of your quizzes. We'll just replace it. And students like made cakes that looked like cells and they made jello models. And we had cupcakes showing like how red blood cells couldn't be mixed with other red blood cell types. And I just remember going like, well, damn, man, this is, this is fun. It doesn't have to be sitting there reading the book. Creative. It's yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, how I had a student who explored learned the most. And it's like, yeah. as soon as you said the functions of the kidney, like that music came in my head. <laughs> yeah, so. and you learn you learn what people are excited about. We even had a yeah. student who like decided to explore urine therapy and did like a whole case study on it and explained it and it like showed how it's beneficial. And I just remember sitting there going, that's gross, but cool. Like, <laughs> I'm glad it floats your boat because, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, so you get to cool. learn things. And like I said, if you teach it, you understand yeah. it. So, you know, Absolutely. cupcakes Absolutely. with like antigens and antibodies and everybody was doing great at like understanding blood transfusions. And I loved it. Yeah. So cool. Fun. <laughs> Love it. Totally fun. So much fun as well. So much fun. Love it. Um, so what I would probably ask, uh, thank you for answering that whole teaching yeah. thing, because I'm sure therapists listening to this are interested in perhaps taking the step into that arena. Um, Such a good idea. Yeah. 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 If it's something that you want to do and you're passionate about it, trust me, nobody learns from somebody at the front. That's just like, mom, 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 mom. like it doesn't work. Huh. Right. So, and I think, you know, most schools are looking that you have experience in practice. Um, and it's always great if you have experience in teaching, but you know, there's just so many ways to help support the next generation of therapists, right? Yeah, so. absolutely. Absolutely. So let's talk about therapists and perhaps 
the challenges that might face them in specializing in lymphatics as an area of, I'm going to call it massage. Um, yeah, it is. Yeah. So I'm... <laughs> What, what challenges might face a therapist when they're thinking, you know what, I really like the idea of going into lymphatics more. Yeah. What, what no. might be a challenge that comes up for them? So, so one of the hardest things is because it's such a light, gentle technique, right? So similar as a lot of therapists, when they go into like craniosacral therapy or visceral manipulation, you know, a lot of other therapists or doctors or physios go, how the hell does that do anything? It's so light. It's so gentle. You guys have got to be like messing with me. You're just like taking a snooze while treatment. Right. And yeah. so it is, it is one of those things. Having said that though, is the world of lymphatic drainage and lymph therapy has so much research behind it. So actually more than craniosacral and more than visceral manipulation, yeah. we have so much research as to the, the effectiveness and the validity of the therapy that it's, you know, for that reason, sometimes it's a little bit easier, but, um, I will say probably the most difficult is the education piece. So educating patients, educating doctors, educating therapists who are going to refer to you as to what the hell you do, <laughs> because we get, we get like those two, four hours or whatever that we get at school and everyone goes, Oh, that lymph thing. You mean like where you like come into an armpit and you go pump, 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 pump. And I'm like, no, it's not at all what I mean, but if you'd like, I can explain it to you, which is like, that's why I had to write a book was because patients, we would spend 45 minutes explaining all the things we're going to do. And they would turn around and they go, I don't remember all the stuff you said. Yeah. Right. So you have to, you have to like bombard clients with so much educational pieces so they can understand the value of it. And that's also a good educator too, is you can under, you can explain it. But how do they then share that with their doctor? How do they then share that with their family or, you know, other therapists? That is the hardest part, in my personal opinion, about a niche is that you feel like you have to justify and validate what you're doing because it's not as accepted in mainstream yet. But where it's now versus 20 years ago is so much better. Yeah. So it just, it has to grow. That is definitely the hardest part about this niche is, you know, you don't get people, people can like search you online and go, oh, massage. I understand that. Right. People can visualize what massage looks like. And so like for lymph, we don't call it lymph massage because it doesn't look anything like massage. We call it lymph drainage yeah. or lymph techniques or lymph therapy because it's so different that they come in and they'd be so disappointed if they thought it was a massage because it's nothing like it. Yeah. But you really have to educate the hell out of everyone about what you do. So your website has to be like a lymph brochure with every ounce of information you can give. Right. So, you know, you end up doing a lot of YouTube, a lot of podcasts, you end up doing a lot of writing brochures, website, social media at nausea. Mm. Um, and that's, that's intimidating. And, you know, I think the educational part of it, yes, like you said, <clears throat> absolutely vital. Yeah. And educating other allied health again. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and making yeah. those networks as well, I think, is vital too. So yeah. having, and again, what I had in my kind of stable of things were people who specialized in oncology, people who specialized in other parts that will affect lymphatics like nutrition and all of this stuff that I didn't really do. And I'd be like, oh, I need you to go and see this person. I need you to go and see this person. They'd be like, why? <laughs> yeah. But but and I think too that as a therapist, the same thing as with teaching is like yeah. you need to talk about what you're passionate about. Yeah. So, you know, I if you sat here and somebody said, oh, do you know somebody who specializes in scar work? Instantaneously, you come up because you wow. talk about it and you share information about it and you teach it. And like, that's the words that come into mind, aside from all the fun stuff from our last vacation together, um, <laughs> the things that pop into my head. But the same thing happens here. Like if somebody is on a massage therapy group, let's say on social media, and they go, hey, do you know somebody who understands lymphatics? 
Yeah. My name gets dropped like 10 times and I'm not actively looking for patients at this moment, but it's because that's what I put out there all the time. Yeah. Right. Like here's more research about new lymphatic techniques. Here's lymphedema stuff. Here's compression garments. Why am I wearing compression when I fly? Right. You know, you have lymph in your eyeballs, all the fun stuff that I love. Right. Like I'm not talking about frozen shoulder anymore because yeah, I don't it care. Yeah. Much. yeah. It doesn't bring you the same level of joy. Let's, let's yeah. kind of condo that. <laughs> yeah. Like seriously, like, let's just like pick the things that bring us joy. And that's what I talk about. Those are the people I want to see. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. So if you share with everybody and like their neighbors and their friends and their family, what you love to do, those are the people that come back to you. Yeah. Right. True. So that's the thing I've learned the most is that you talk about wh who the people you want to see, who are the patients you want and don't, don't bring up the other stuff. Like if you don't care about plantar fasciitis, don't talk about it. If you don't like to touch feet, don't talk about feet. Yep. Every time I talk, I talk about eyeballs because I love working on eyeballs. It's one of my favorite things. <laughs> so you don't hear me oh. dropping stuff about the knee because I don't care that much about the knee, to be honest. Yeah. I want your eyeballs. <laughs> I've got a perfect uh, student to hook you up with because she was asking perfect. me about scars on the cornea. Yeah. Yeah. Fun. And she's like, what can I do? I'm like, oh, <laughs> so much. fun. How fun, I thought. Let me go and find out. Uh -huh. yeah, I thought someone no, and that's, <laughs> and that's the thing is, you know, <laughs> nobody wants to be treated by a generalist, right? Yeah. We all say, oh, I want to treat pregnancy and I want to treat headaches and I'm oh I really love this and they think they need to be the jack of all trades we don't want the jack of all trades mm -hmm. yeah yeah I want the person who's super excited about what they're doing and who exactly. love doing work on eyeballs I don't want somebody who's like yeah I think maybe something close to there I could do we don't want the generalist we want the specialist yeah it's true when we are getting treatment ourselves when we yeah. you know who can I see? Who who's going to recommend me the best person for this work, for this exactly. job, for my problem? Because I want my problem to be solved by someone who knows what they're doing in this area. Yeah, yeah. you want to surround yourself with a network of specialists. Yeah, I love right? that. you want to say, you know what, you need to talk to Christine because that's a great question about scars, and you know what, she's going to know it. I could probably make up some stuff. And I could like, I could pull together from my knowledge base and I could give you stuff. But if you want somebody who's like geeking out, super uber passionate, then that's, <laughs> that's who you're looking for. So fun. Yeah. So you so, want to surround yourself with those people. I'm going to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of interject and be like, so there's a couple of things that happened in there. You, there was mention of your book. <laughs> yeah. so we will talk about that in a second first I want to know what the benefits are for therapists coming into the area of lymphatics like what what is so wonderful about lymphatics for a therapist from a therapist point of view so number one is um your thumbs look mine still work <laughs> so <too>. first <laughs> off is you will prevent yourself from wearing down it is, it is a very, like, if I like on my arm, like it is like super, super light, like that's lymphatic work right there. I don't have to like hold tension in any of my body. I don't have to like strategically stack my joints. So my weight can go properly through to get the depth. I'm not exhausting myself. It's not a workout. Yeah. So this is the technique that I think, you know, I know I look really tall and strong on this, on the screen, obviously it's, it helps, but I'm not a big person. I'm five, two. And I knew that I wasn't going to be able to do deep tissue for my whole career. There was just no way. And so I, I really do contribute that doing lymphatic drainage has been what has saved my hands, has saved my body mm -hmm. and has allowed me to see four to six clients a day without being damaged or sore or recovering over the weekend from doing deep tissue. Right. So it's really saved my hands. I don't think I'm going to, uh, you know, the arthritis, I don't think it's going to hit the way that it would yeah. with deeper techniques. Um, and once you specialize, I will say you get, you should charge more. So if you want to look at making your time more valuable, you could be that jack of all trades, like everybody else who's on the website, that's on the web, that's in your area. 
But I pretty much guarantee you, if you decided to specialize in lymph, A, you should charge more. And B, the, your competition goes way down. Yeah. So really, you're going to build up your business faster. You're going to have people who are specifically looking for you. Because as soon as you type in lymph drainage, Perth, I guarantee you, you're going to be found out of, there's three of you, I'm sure. Yeah. Right? right? In my city, there's maybe about 20 of us. So... Yeah. And I've trained a lot of them because that's, I geek out about it and they know. So I'm trying to create a lymphatic hub in Western Canada. Yeah. Right. So yeah, save your body. Yeah. Uh, create such a niche that, you know, it doesn't take much to get into it. And to be honest, it's, I think it's the most common sense of any treatment of any system in the body. The lymph system makes so much sense. Mm -hmm. Um. And it's, it's one of those things too, is that, um, it's, it's very, very easy to grow your business because there is so many people looking for the therapists that do this. Yeah. Yeah. And absolutely. so there's, you high, know, demand. there's a high demand. People, once people understand what it is, yeah. they're like, I need that. Yeah. And there's levels, there's levels of therapists. There's therapists who have generic or gentle, you know, um, basic lymphatic training, which means, you know, somebody's got sinus issues, somebody's got swollen ankles, cool, but you can build it into, you know, post-cancer and lymphedema and lymph nodes removed. And that's even more specialized, awesome. right? So for example, in my whole province of Alberta, there's about 30 of us yeah. who are certified lymphedema therapists. And I didn't start with that. I started as just a lymph therapist and I was very happy. Yeah. You know, I got to treat all the the weird, you know, still eyeball issues and ear issues and, you know, stomach issues and digestion and all those things. But now I also work with patients who've had lymph nodes removed, radiation, post-cancer, post-surgical. And this is where, again, like, you know, scar tissue and lymph is, you know, like peanut butter and jelly. And hand, right? doesn't it? it goes hand in hand. They totally do. And so it's, it's a great niche. Um, and I will say too, it's a very enjoyable session for clients. Yeah. So I hate that whole concept of no pain, no gain. I think it's, I think it's a delusional system idea, but, um, my clients fall asleep. They feel better when they get up, they're rested. Their immune system is boosted. They are relaxed. They look forward to coming and seeing me. It's, it's a non-invasive pain-free amazing technique I, I I don't know I don't know why anybody wouldn't do it to be honest it's <laughs> it's the bee's knees it's awesome it's the bee's knees do it it is it is it's awesome <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah absolutely. yeah yeah um, I, know I love it. I love I love that yeah, yeah. I, really, I really love that um the clients benefit so much yeah. so much and yeah. like you said it is pleasant to receive. It's not, it it's not, you know. They don't in, have to breathe through in it. Any, in any way, shape or form. It is no. beautiful, and it, beautiful. And it stimulates the parasympathetic so fast. Like normally within like three minutes of treatment, their stomach's gurgling. <laughs> and then if you're, re if you're good and you just, let them mellow out five minutes later they're snoring like honestly yeah yeah so it's not okay i just need you to breathe through this next one you can do it no no, no i'm not dropping an elbow into anything ever <laughs> my elbows have been on vacation and my thumbs have been on holiday for many 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 years yeah absolutely so, absolutely yeah. <laughs> um, um, that's great thank you thank you for yeah. sharing that i think that people will understand a little bit more about what's what's in it for me as a therapist, what's in it for my clients. And yes, there might be challenges. However, the benefits potentially outweigh dramatically. I think so. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. So let's talk about your book. Yeah. I hold love talking. Up, hold it up for me. Hold it up for me because I think um, it's absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Robin is a talented artist as well. So she I did. did. I drew them all. She drew all and of them. I got, I did. And then you know how like 
every good coloring book has pictures that are inspirational colors. I got to show you this. It's really cute. I got my kids to go through the pictures and they colored a whole bunch of them. So oh. that way you could see how to, you could do it. So these are, my kids are published too. Oh. I know. I thought so. I thought it was like, it's perfect. That is so lovely. Tell yeah. us more about the book. Tell us, tell us more about yeah. that. So, um, like I said, it's one of those things is you have to educate the hell out of people. You have to, your patients have to understand what's going on. Um, and, you know, like I would spend 45 minutes with clients at the beginning of their first treatment. It was like 90 minute session. 45 minutes was me just explaining what is your lymph system? Why does it work? And why is it not working well now? And so we were giving out like leaflets and like papers. And I was like, this is ridiculous. Like we got to make something that's more substantial that has a way for them to keep track of things as they go through treatments, et cetera. So this is like, it's called living a lymphy life and understanding your lymph. And so it's basically, it's written the way that I speak. So it's not written like a textbook. It's written like a crazy Canuck um, or Canadian. If you don't <laughs> know. But, and it's like, it's like me telling you a story about how your lymph system works and there's coloring pages in it because nothing's less stressful than coloring. Um, and so it sort of walks you through like how your lymph system works, how your lymph nodes function, why do we care about, you know, immune cells and how do we get rid of the waste products and how can we keep ourselves, um, our lymph moving? And then, you know, it's designed for people who have lymph issues or lymphedema. So in there, it talks about like certain exercises that are really good. And then there's pages that are exercises provided by your therapist and you keep track of what you were given. It's all in one space. And then it talks about like, if you're using a lymphatic pump, what are the settings you were given? What unit did you get? When did you get it? Who is the manufacturer? It's a way to keep track of all your lymph things. Cause guaranteed you're not going to remember. And you know, all the other sort of journaling books had nothing specific about lymph in them. And I was like, well, that doesn't work. I need, I need it lymphtastic. I need it to be awesome. And so, yeah, there's stuff about lymphatic taping and like, you know, we even like did like little pages, like, you know, showing you what your body looks like and which way the lymph tape should go. And your therapist is supposed to draw on it for you. And then there's like journaling pages. And I just, I wanted it to be somewhere where a lymph patient could continue to keep that information, but also have information they could share with other therapists. Yeah. Yeah. And go here, read this section about what are lymph nodes, because I don't think you understand. Mm -hmm. Or let me reference back to this, right? Mm -hmm. So it was just to be able to put it in one space. Um, you know, I didn't want it to be really expensive. So I found that, you know, the best way I could sort of produce it and keep the cost low. So we did put it through. Um, it's available like on Amazon. Yeah. And so, you know, I think here in Canada, I want to say it's like 28 for the book um, the same in Australian dollars we're I, roughly, yeah we're pretty close though roughly neck and neck roughly we're almost on par I think so and you know we didn't produce like tons of the books it's literally printed on demand yeah. so if you're like hey I want five copies they'll print it for you on demand so there's not a huge warehouse of just these books sitting there um but it was just instead of giving leaflets and handouts and all those kinds of things and a lot of therapists you know, use this as a tool that they say, Hey, here's the information we talked about, keep track of this stuff together and go from there. Right. So just trying to make it functional and, and educational at the same time. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Love yeah. it. It's so, so clever and so beneficial to clients. Well, yeah. that's the, that's the intention. So hopefully it comes across that way. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely does. Yeah. Um, and we'll put links to all of that in the show notes as well for you, Robin. No cool. um, because I'm sure people will be like, I've got to get one of those. A lymph, well, a lymph coloring book is definitely not, there's not many of them on the market. So it is, <laughs> it is a niche <laughs> book as well. <laughs> yeah. So um, what, what I was going to ask about was, uh, partly about the conference as well so we'll touch on that in just a second but um can you let us know about any emerging trends that are happening in the field of lymphatics like what's what's you've seen changes across oh, yeah. a couple of decades right 
Um, at least I'm counting. <laughs> a couple times. Yeah, there's some yeah. It's some really interesting trends. So what's, um, happening? what's happening in the field of lymphatics? What's, what's... Well, it was interesting because when I first got into it, there was a lot of like the snake oil kind of concept where, oh, you should use this kind of oil with this kind of herb in it. And if you just rub it on, it magically fixes all your lymph issues, which, you know, was not accurate. Um, because lymphatics, it really depends on how well the system is functioning. It's not always that we got to move the fluid. It's, can you move the fluid? And so if you can't physically move the fluid, I don't care what you rub on your legs. It's not going to magically move it to your kidneys for you. It doesn't work that way. It's like having, you know, all the pipes in the city get broken and there's a flood and you're like, oh, we just got to get that fluid into the pipes. And you're like, well, that's kind of useless because the pipes aren't going to move anything. So what you doing? And so, you know, it's been, it's been really encouraging in the last 10 years, social media has done a really good job. There's been some good celebrities that have like talked about lymphatic work. And I think, unfortunately, a little bit delusionally, but um, I can't drop names. I think that'd be inappropriate, but there are some big social media ask. <laughs> some big influencers out there that I think have the wrong idea. Um, but, but it is one of those things, it's becoming more of a, an acceptable treatment plan when it comes to issues of immunity, but also mostly swelling, which is encouraging. I do like to see that. Um, I think, you know, there's been some disappointing trends in and around, um, plastic surgery. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times plastic surgery, it's, you know, we're trying to look our very best. We're trying to, you know, minimize scarring. We're trying to make everything look great. And so, oh, we should get lymphatic work too. Um, and the right kind of lymphatic therapy does work. Yeah. You can really help scars heal faster. You can make them look better, which from a plastic surgeon's perspective, you should find a good lymph therapist who's on your side because we will make things look good um, and minimize the swelling pretty fast, which is the other piece to the healing. Um I will say probably the most disappointing trends that I've seen have been like something like Brazilian lymph drainage or lymph massage, because it is very aggressive. It's not lymphatic in, there's no, I can't find scientific backing for it. I really do think it was unfortunately developed through just misunderstanding or misinformation um, because people getting deep work done okay. through a scar the day yeah. after. Like it's a That's lot of petrissage. Yeah. And for people who've had like tummy tucks, et cetera, there's a huge scar in their abdomen and the therapist is just coming in and just doing these gross movements through the abdomen. And that causes more scar tissue. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah, you and I should start a movement. Um, but <laughs> it's just, it's really sad because a lot of people will go and get that. And then when they come back home, which is normally, you know, and then they come and find a lymph therapist and they're like, oh, you don't know what you're doing. And I'm like, why, what are you talking about? They're like, well, when I was there, I had to like take a whole bunch of pain medications to get my treatment. And I was screaming and I'm like, good God, what? And you paid for this? Like, what are you doing? Well, no, this is what I was told I needed. So to me, that that's a very disappointing trend. And it's, it's, it's not based on strong scientific foundation. Um, the other one is something um, that we're starting to see a little bit more is incisional drainage, which is where there's this concept that if you have swelling, well, the fastest way to get it out is to push it through the incision. And it's actually completely outside the scope of practice, but it's become more common. And it's really only legal to do if you're a nurse. Otherwise, it's completely outside your, your scope of practice. It's bodily fluids. And you are making that tissue not able to heal. Yeah. So unfortunately, thing. yeah, and it's a very... The risk of infection goes through the roof. And yeah, so unfortunately, it's been a common trend in North America, which I have been trying to fight very strongly, oh, wow. um, as well as Brazilian uh, lymphatics. But they're just, again, there's no foundation to it. If it's, you know, I think it's a rumor or a, a fairy tale on um, that it could be something and if somebody knows somebody who does it. Um, but again, it's, you know, I, I teach obviously for the one Institute, but I've trained with other schools of lymphatics as well, and there's no foundation to it. So that can make it very difficult. Um, 
I will say, though, some of the more promising things have been around lymphedema, working with people who've had lymph nodes removed, yeah, working with people who've had radiation therapy, and the acceptance of manual lymphatic work included with like bandaging and wrapping and compression. That's really, you know, gone through. There's been a lot more awareness in political rounds in regards to lymphatic treatment and the necessity for it, which has been really good. We've seen some really great stuff with lymph and scar work. That's been really encouraging to see. And I like that. Um, I, I'm kind of an oddball. Like I said, I like to work with eyeballs. I like to work with eustachian tubes, with your cochlea, with tinnitus and vertigo inside the mouth, amazing amounts of lymph inside your mouth. And so working, there's been more knowledge that's been coming back about lymphatics inside the mouth dentistry. Oh. which has been really encouraging. So yeah, I don't know. It's, there's just, just so many light things. bulbs go off there in my brain. I was like, oh. yeah, no, <laughs> I'll talk to you about this later. <laughs> yeah, no. And I've seen some really encouraging things with like um, lymphatics in regards to fertility as well. Mm -hmm. So there's lots of research. I was very lucky. I got to go to the lymphatic forum, which was a lot of lymphatic researchers from around the world last um, June here in Canada and uh, it was really interesting because I think I'm a geek, but then you hang out with these guys who research in labs with mice and they, they out geek me, but <laughs> I'm sitting there going, you created lymphedema in a mouse. And they're like, you touch people with lymphedema. So we were equally in awe about each other, <laughs> which was good. That's, so cool. um, that's very cool. <laughs> but, but the research that they're doing about lymph and post transplants about lymph uh, nodal resections, um, not like looking at how, when they should remove lymph nodes in regards to cancer. Ah. Like there's some really, really cool things that people are looking at. So that's very encouraging. I love that. I think so. um, the thing that I've seen come through is the dye in Australia, you know, so they're injecting the dye and then doing the, I think it's yeah, the sentinel node, the sentinel yeah. node dissection. Yeah. And that's yeah. good. Like that's been around for a little while. And I love that there's, that's being done. So that's just because, becoming more and more um, known about, I think. In yeah, which is good because before they used to go, you know, if I was a cancer cell and I had to move from that tumor, I think I might go to those five nodes. And so they would just randomly take, like they, it's a very educated guess. It's not as, as simple yeah, yeah, as yeah. <laughs> but it's, with the dye, they inject the dye into the actual tumor, and then they watch which are the lymph nodes that it would go to first. And that allows us to be a lot more um, selective. Mm -hmm. And even having one lymph node removed creates lymphedema. It creates stage zero lymphedema. But I'd rather have somebody with stage zero lymphedema with one lymph node removed over somebody who has 36 removed, Absolutely. Which, yeah. which is very common. Yeah. to see somebody with like 36 or, you know, all the lymph nodes on the one side of their neck removed, which could be 80 or 90 lymph nodes. Mm -hmm. And so I, I'm very pro sentinel node dissection. I love that. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. I think it's well, you touched on something there as well that I think is a very common thing that still we need to help therapists understand the importance of understanding lymphatics in terms of understanding the treatment for oncology and lymph removal and surgeries and lymphatics and then doing a normal remedial massage. Yes. That is still an area that has a huge knowledge gap in it. And yeah. it's one that um, needs work, I think. It does. I, I am encouraged, though, a lot of the the oncology programs that I'm seeing right now um, do include at least a bit of understanding what lymphedema is. Yeah. And so that's encouraging. Um, and it's not just lymph nodes rem being removed. Radiation kills lymphatics. Like it doesn't like buzz them for a couple of weeks and then they come back. Like I mean, it kills lymphatics. It makes it like, you know, you have no fly zones. Yeah, radiation yeah. creates a no lymph zone. Lymph does not move through radiated tissue. I don't care how much you try and coax it. It needs to find a brand new pathway. And so, you know, some people go, oh, you don't have to worry. I just, I didn't have lymph nodes removed. I'm fine. Uh, and if you don't follow up and go, but have you had radiation? 
you're missing that huge piece. And unfortunately, I have seen way too many cases where therapists just didn't know. Just and it's yeah. not their fault. No. They honestly were not told. And so I always joke, I'm like, so on health history forms, we've all built our health history forms. How many of us have on there, have you had cancer? And everybody's hands go up. And I'm like, oh, that's very, very exciting. Great job. And then I go, so how many of you say, how many lymph nodes have you had removed? And everybody's just looking at me like I'm an idiot. And I'm like, so one lymph node causes lymphedema. If you have one removed, right? Like, yeah, it's impressive if you have 120 removed. But if you have one removed, and then I say, and who has on their form, have you had radiation therapy? Because radiation will affect your lymphatics way more than chemo, right? And yeah. everyone's just looking at, they're like, well, we were never told to do that in school. I know. Now you know, though. Yeah. So that changes. That should change how you see every patient now. And I get people who are just pissed at me. And I'm like, no, no, no. Don't blame the messenger on the fact that you <laughs> were told this. Because it's not your fault. But Ooh. now that you know, yeah. you have to treat with in good conscience that you don't want to create a worse situation for patients. So oncology, absolutely. But I will say I've also seen lymphatic issues come from a hysterectomy. Yes. Because yes. sometimes it's not a very easy plant and lymph nodes can be little bitty little grains of rice. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. so it's not the surgeon's fault. Yeah. The surgeon did their very best and they did what they had to do. But sometimes lymph nodes get removed. And so understanding how it works and what it looks like and asking the right questions can be the difference between helping a patient or creating a worse situation. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it sometimes is very exhausting. The amount of times I have to explain, and I say this with love, the amount of times I've had to explain to a doctor what the lymphatic system is doing and why it's not safe for them to get certain types of treatment, I should not be the one sharing that. Mm, mm, mm. But sometimes I have to, Yeah. right? So it's, it's, it's a hard gig sometimes because it is, it can be very infuriating realizing that, good God, why didn't somebody know about this before? Yeah. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. And this is not, you are not the first educator that I know that has the same issue. Like the, the students come in and this is actually a reoccurring issue. It's a knowledge gap in our massage education. It yeah. really genuinely is. And but I will, but I would say though, that you can't teach everything. This like in massage school, you can only learn so much. So then say, look, if you want to work with these people, you need to take this continuing ed. This is the steps. Yeah. Because how long are we going to make our therapists go for school? Is it a six-year program? Because <laughs> then they would learn everything, yeah. right? But how many people would do it? So exactly. it's it's a delicate balance of, you know, what what is foundational. Yeah. And then... If you want to go into oncology, if you want to go into pre and post surgical, if you want to work with lymphatics, don't just come out of school and say, oh, I'm a lymph therapist because I have three hours. Like, yeah, right. Yeah. Go take more training. Yeah. Niche niches require specialized training. Yeah. 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 And sometimes specialized training in stuff that you just need to know. <laughs> you might. Yeah. It doesn't mean so you're going to use it. I went and studied the you know, um, I'm a decongestant lymphatic therapist in Australia with Casey Smith, which was a program yeah. developed by doctors here. Yeah. And I don't really use it all the time. I use it, but I don't use it. I don't it's advertise. It's not your foundation. It's not everything. It's, it's, I don't advertise as lymphatic therapist, right? Yeah. But I need yeah. it in order to treat scars. Yeah. Yeah. And to safely treat scars and to watch for when they need to be referred out. Yeah, it's all of that. Right. Yeah. And it's like, okay, so I went and got all the specialized training that actually is vital in order for me to do my other training, my yeah. actual treatments in the best yeah. way I can. Oh, and but that happens in massage school. There's conditions that I learned about in school, like I had to know about you know, radial and ulnar palsy, and I've never treated it, exactly. but I know what, but I know what I'm looking for. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So it's the same thing is that 
you yeah. need to recognize the complementary therapies to what you want to do and appreciate the value of somebody else being trained in it. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Totally agree. Yeah. So it's just interesting. It's like, you know, when we're looking at our continuing education, yeah. finding things that actually align with what you want to specialize in is yeah. really important. Really. Yeah. And like, honestly, I don't do massage anymore. I don't do traditional massage. So if I have an oncology patient that I'm working with lymphatically, I know five other oncology massage therapists who are kick ass. And that's great because they should kick ass and they should do what they love. And so I lovingly refer them over and they get the best of what they can for treatment. And that's, I think, more valuable than trying to pretend you can do it all. Yeah. Um, I love that we kind of, I feel like we've vented a little bit, but however, no. it's... <laughs> Never. So apologies for people that feel a little bit vented on. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, don't apologize. I, I think it's really important. And the fact that we get so worked up about it just shows that it genuinely is an issue. Um, it is. And we really are passionate about helping therapists be yeah. the best therapists they can be. And um, if you don't know where these gaps are, you don't know to then go and go, oh, right, this is where I need to go for help. And this is where I need, to, yeah. Because yeah. And not, you're just not told. Yeah. yeah. No, and if you're passionate about it, that's great. And And there's ways to build up that gap, right? Is to make it, let's make the gap smaller. Let's, like, that's why we teach the ones that we do. Yeah. It's because exactly. we see that, that's, that gap that needs filling in. Mm -hmm. And so... Yeah, if like oncology floats your boat or you're like, hey, immune system, you know, rah, rah, especially after 2020, um, you know, there's yeah. there is a field that is in need of therapists and mm -hmm. and there's ways to bridge the gap. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so when people are learning about lymphatics, students in class, what are things that sometimes that they find trickier to overcome than things that are just like oh yeah is yeah. it pressure is it what, what is it about it well I think I think a lot of the time the, my favorite misconception is that lymph is only in your lymph nodes uh -huh. and so I love that because students show up they're like oh, so we're just going to work in the nodes and I'm like well everywhere you have blood you have lymph yeah. and they're like what and I'm like think of all the tissues that you have blood and you have lymph there so we can affect all of those tissues that are vascularized by doing lymphatic work. And that's, I love that. That's like such a big gap, I think, in the learning curve, because we are taught just a lot about lymph nodes. Um, but definitely the hardest piece is, as a therapist, um, is the pressure. Yeah. Because we're all taught about depth and we're, we're so used to getting into muscles and it just, it just feels good. And we're like in fascia <laughs> and it's just, it's just juicy and it's awesome. And lymph is, lymph is like hanging out in the really gentle waves and tides of the human ocean. And that's kind of how I think about it. And so there is the ability to actually palpate lymphatic fluid. You can palpate the lymphatic movement. You can palpate the direction that it's going in. Um, you can palpate the, the quality of the lymph. And so you really have to just shut up everything. <laughs> And you have to just listen. And it's the hardest thing to do. But it is such an invaluable technique. It's just, it's really shutting out all those other things. And it's just like, you know, when you first started, you know, massage school and stuff, they're like, you're going to find these knots. They're called trigger points. And I was like, what the hell are you talking about? And it took me like four years to honestly go, that's a trigger point. And the same thing, it's like, once you spend time listening and working with a system, you start noticing things. You start noticing a healthy flow versus a compromised flow, a fast rhythm versus a slow rhythm, and all those pieces. So I find the hardest the hardest pieces for students is the the pressure 
because it is significantly lighter than you'll ever believe. Um, but secondly is getting out of your own way. Um, I'm a very sciencey kind of person and I think about things before I feel things. And it took me a long time to go, go with your fingers and go with your gut. And, and you don't have to, you don't have to science it, even though there's a huge science behind it, you don't have to, you know, be able to see it, to believe it. Right. So that's probably the other, the other piece, but the pressure definitely. Yeah. 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 yeah that's cool. And I, I love that you're like, I'm very sciencey. Um, <laughs> I don't need to science this up. <laughs> and, and I will try. That's hilarious. I will um, try and science it up for you, but there's times where I'm like, I can't explain why, but my hands are just telling me it's going in this direction. I'm feeling that this is, you know, there's some really amazing things that you can learn about what's going on in somebody's body yeah. by simply listening. Yeah. So cool. So yeah. cool. <laughs> I, attention. I am very much a, a feely person. So I, I even have my sat nav in my car is called vibe nav. Like I just feel this is the right way. Sometimes it's a bit, bit of a rerouting. Yeah. <laughs> Very Mandalorian, right? This is the way. This, this is, is the way, way we're going. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. it's kind of funny. We, I do we say that all the time. We're like the lymph is strong with this one. And so yeah. <laughs> so I love that. I love that. Yeah. That it's like, you know what? There is an ability to feel way more than you ever, ever imagined. Yeah. Because when we were in massage school, we're like, how do you feel muscle fiber direction? I know. And then like after a year, you're like, how do you not feel fiber muscle direction? Yeah. Right. And then, you know, then you're said, oh, well, you know, you can feel um, scar tissue. Well, bullshit. You can feel scar tissue. Of course you can. Right. And then people go, oh, how am I possibly going to feel cerebral spinal fluid movements? Uh, right. CST. Yeah. Yes, you can. Of course you can. <laughs> if you can feel organs in their motility, like manual, like, you know, visceral therapists, then absolutely. absolutely you can feel the lymph movement. I, I get a hard time from people when I say, I can feel through stone. And they go, yeah. <laughs> you're with my heart stones. It's like, of course I can feel through stone. And they're like, she's obviously just a little bit backward. Um. <laughs> and that And that might be true as well. But... <laughs> it doesn't mean you still can't feel through the stones yeah, but it's like people like, I remember too what was it in like the end of first year and then they started teaching us how to work with our elbows and therapists were like I'll never feel anything through my elbow but and then there's therapists who are like I feel better with my elbow than I do with my fingers and you're like there you go like stop limiting yourself I know right right yeah. get out of your own way is very much yeah I can feel across the room if your lymph is congested. I can see sometimes where lymph pathways are blocked just by looking at you. It's not, <laughs> it's, it's what you focus on. Yeah. Right. So yeah, it's fun. Okay. So I would love for you to share a little bit about why you decided to make a conference about lymphatics. Well, dude, there's like nobody who's done that really. Like, like there's, there's some big lymph conferences, but they only go to certain cities. And mm -hmm. in Canada, I'd have to fly to Toronto, which is like a good four hour flight. And just word to the wise, domestic flights in Canada are 10 times worse than me going to Australia. So it's, it's obscene. And there was, I wanted a conference where patients, therapists, families, doctors, anybody could come and learn about lymphatics. And I wanted it to be affordable. I wanted it to be applicable, approachable, and and valid for anybody who wanted to come. So yeah, so I created LymphiCon, which is kind of like that other con thing, but way better because it's about the lymph. <laughs> so LymphiCon was sort of developed out of um my family are huge comic book people. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. So my kids are all named after comic book characters. Yeah. And um and so it's one of those things that we wanted to make it fun. We wanted to make it um, easily digestible. And so when I look at your immune system, I see superheroes that are fighting against villains, that are fighting against viruses and pathogens, and that are defending you 
from the aliens from another planet or from, you know, the bad guy that lives under the, the sewers and stuff like that. And so when we did it, we created like, we have our, our mascots, we have the lymph collector. He is the big guy and his sidekick is Nancy node. And we have new superheroes every year. We play up the comic book feature and basically um, we just finished our second year. It's been one day events up to this point. We're looking at a two day conference next year. And we have, we have speakers who come in, who talk to conditions, who talk about, um, advances in the field, who talk about techniques, who talk about, you know, supportive things like garments, compression, we get, we're normally sponsored by the big compression garment companies, by the lymphedema associations. We bring in researchers, therapists. Um, we, we try and create an event where patients and their families could understand and learn about exercises for breast cancer survivors. Yeah. But also therapists could learn about the new research into why compression pump therapy works and how to boost your immune system with nutrition and why acupuncture helps with your immune system and why doing swimming is beneficial for circulation. I wanted to make it very across the board. Um, we get credits for therapists who can attend so that way they can get scored points and stuff like that for their association. Um, we just, you know, we're going to do some, uh, some interactive, like we're going to do a lymphatic yoga class this upcoming year and have like somebody come in and teach lymphatic yoga and just anything that allows for people to get more information. Mm -hmm. And so we, we try and tag up, um, the Canadian massage conference was a very big supporter this past year. So they have an amazing conference. I go and, you know, geek out about lymph at their conference and they come and support the hell out of us. Um, it's just, it's just another way to get the information out. So and so we try and get a couple doctors to come and talk as well. There's a microvascular surgeon here in Calgary that I try and get to do a talk. Uh, researchers from Stanford, that kind of idea. Just again, it's another way to get the information, right? So yeah, we've done it where it's been recorded so people can watch it later on. Yeah. Yeah. So if you don't happen to be in Canada or you don't want to come to Canada, Christine, oh. then... Like you that. could still, you could still take part, you know? Awesome. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. amazing, Robin. So, yeah. like, seriously, take my hat off to you. A woman of action, for sure. Trying to be, and still just little old me, right? So, <laughs> however, I mean, that's right. a huge undertaking, huge, huge yeah. undertaking. Yeah. But it's um, possible, and it doesn't have to be big scale New York city kind of thing. It can be a down to earth event and people get the benefits of it. So you don't have to go huge. Yeah. Like yeah. the first two, the first year I, I broke even the second year I made a little bit so I can invest it into the next year, mm -hmm. but there was nothing that I did that anybody else couldn't do. And that's, that's the I'm honesty of it. doing it. Cause well, but that's what I mean. Like, yeah. Yeah, and that's the difference. It's not impossible. That's the difference. Yeah, that's it's not impossible. Yeah. It's not impossible. However, for many people, it's like, yeah, I want to, but uh, yeah. <laughs> and that's that's actually, I think, something that I loved about you. We met a long time ago in the same coaching program, yeah. <laughs> business yeah. coaching program, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, where, you know, we just did stuff. <laughs> we got and that was and that was the thing is that you can't just sit there and hope for things to change yeah. if you're not willing to put yourself out there and so I started losing my my nervousness like you know yeah I like to look presentable and yeah you know but if I do a podcast and I do something weird and I look like an asshole or I look like a like I'm just super <laughs> geeky that's that that's, that's okay genuine. that's who I am <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and like you know I was hanging out with my uh my wellness bus bestie um we have a, a podcast um, it's called barefoot bliss and divine wellness okay. and we talk about how nutrition and your immune system affects your day-to-day -day everything and we were recording this morning and we did four podcast recordings 
And I did, uh, because I came back from Australia and I was really congested and sick. And so I said something and it was something like, I've got serious mucus issues. And she's like, we're keeping <laughs> that in. And I was like, <laughs> You know what? We're going to keep it memorable. Um, I think it was our eighth episode. We had um, a guy who owns a nutrition store and he brought me a cookie that was like really healthy. So I'm eating it during the interview because I was like, this is good promo, right? So I'm biting into it. The cookie falls apart. And I mean, goes everywhere. And they kept it in because they're like, it was genuine. And I was like, fine. Like you just, <laughs> it's more important <laughs> to enjoy life and to get information out and to make a change than it is for me to look super presentable is what I've <laughs> oh, I love it it's so fun <laughs> like seriously like you know we all we all have seen newscasters and they do the broadcast and you're like that's great but as soon as one makes an ass of themselves you're like I remember that <laughs> so don't worry so much about making an ass of yourself <laughs> yeah from people you yes. haven't even met yet right <laughs> genuinely passionate about what you do and that's more valuable I think in your life than it is to be prim and proper all the time but that's uh, that's my take on life I guess it's very inspirational and I'm sure many people hearing that is are just going to be like you know what right Robin's right about that <laughs> you Sorry. need more people who are just going to jump and start changing things versus sitting uh, back trying to play it safe things right? don't get changed by observing yeah, yeah you have to actually step out of being a spectator and become a contender like yeah. get into that Lincoln arena people come on right like have have cookie eating problems and be mucusy <laughs> sometimes and it's it's memorable it is really yeah <laughs> Um, okay, is there anything that you would like to share about any upcoming trainings, any educational stuff that you've got going on at the moment? I'm going to put a gazillion show notes in, all the links, books, conferences, trainings, all the things. Um, all so the fun stuff. Up. What, what's, what's, what's coming up for you in training stuff? I I love, love teaching lymph drainage, like aside from all the other things, and I have kids and I'm an artist and all these other things. But um, yeah, I teach and I teach for the Chickley Health Institute. They're based out of the US. Um, Dr. Bruno Chickley, amazing course developer, amazing technique developer, um, amazing guy, honestly. And um, so I teach, I teach several classes for them and I teach international, which is what fills my travel boat. So it's a great way. I was just in Australia. Um, I'm heading to Puerto Rico um, to teach at the end of August. I'm in Calgary and then Phoenix in September. I go back to Taiwan and Shanghai, China in October, Toronto, Canada. Um, I'm in Singapore next year. Like there's so many classes and they're not just North American. So, you know, when I was teaching in Sydney, we had students from South Korea. We had students from Czech Republic Hong Kong. And that's the thing is that there are so many ways to get trained and to add something like this to your practice that you don't have to, and please don't do them online. It is not, this is a hands-on thing. You need to do the hands-on piece with a hands-on instructor because it's, it's not, it's not like what you were taught in school. It is, it is done specifically. And, uh, yeah, I just, I highly encourage that it's something that you delve into and um, yeah, like look for classes all around the world. And there's so many great, amazing providers. Obviously, I love the Chickley Health Institute who I teach for, but the others are great and they have amazing science behind them and they're all trying to do the same thing. So just, just get lymph knowledge and just lymph it out, baby. Lymph like lymph, lymph long and prosper that's what I say I'm like just <laughs> like, <laughs> okay do it. immediately in my head I'm just here nanu nanu it's like <laughs> yes. I just think like you can just make anything lymphatic like you, you know just, just make anything lymphatic that's so fantastic funny. yeah it's great and um, you know thank you so so much for coming today and having this conversation with me I really appreciate it and I'm Anytime. sure 
that it's just going to open the Pandora's box of lymphatics for so many other therapists. Um, yeah, well, I'll, and I'll give you, I'll, I'll make sure that you have my email address as well. Because again, like, if you have questions and you want, you know, I don't mind. Um, I don't know where the world I'll be. So just, you know, give me some grace period, but I might be sleeping. Um, sometimes I sleep. <laughs> it happens. Leave. No. <laughs> so, but yeah, I'll give you my email address too. And then, you know, it's, if people have questions, I love helping. So that's why we get into this in the first place. So. Well, thank you for your generosity today in your time and the information you've shared and the email address. That's really very kind. So um, anytime I get to hang out with you, Chris. It's ah, just good. Yeah. Too good. I mean, we did yeah. have such a good time in Sydney, didn't we? But, we did. Um, Blue Mountains. Woohoo. Awesome. OK, well, thank you so, so much for to snap. Anytime. My pleasure. Oh, 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 oh,